Hi everyone, Alexa Dunn here, and today I'm going to be telling you who's who in Brightly Burning, which is my debut novel. It comes out on May 1st, 2018 from HMH Teen, and it is Jane Eyre in space. So who is who in my cast? Specifically, who's who from Jane Eyre? Who can you expect to see? What new characters might you find? I'm just gonna tell you a little bit about all of the major characters in Brightly Burning so you know what to expect. So first of all, my main character is named Stella Ainsley and she is Jane Eyre. She is 17 years old when the book starts, though she does celebrate a birthday in the course of the book. Stella comes from the Empire, which is the British ship in the fleet, so yes, she is British. She has a delightful British accent, but she was orphaned when she was a child, but was shipped off to the Stalwart when she was 11 as part of an orphan transport program. So the Stalwart is the uh, an American farming ship. I'm going to do a whole video on kind of the world building and technology of the world of Brightly burning but just FYI I'm gonna tell you all the ships that these characters are are from and then you can watch that video to hear more about what it all means. So Stella starts out as an apprentice engineer on board the Stalwart but she doesn't want to be an engineer. She happens to be good at it because her father was an engineer but it's not where her heart lies. She really wants to be a teacher so she applies for a governess position and ends up getting one aboard the mysterious Rochester. There she finds Hugo Fairfax. <sighs> Hugo Fairfax is my Rochester stand-in from Jane Eyre. He is 19 years old, but he became captain of his ship when he was 14 after something very tragic happened to his parents. So he's kind of, you know, a little grizzled and rough. Like, he's not happy with his lot in life. He's been shouldering a lot of responsibility from a young age. And one of those responsibilities is caring for his little sister, Jessa Fairfax. So Jessa is 11 years old, and she is the stand-in for Adele from Jane Eyre. I decided for many reasons to make uh, the character the captain's little sister instead of the love child of his prostitute mistress who might or might not be his child if you haven't read Jane Eyre it's a little scandalous um for many many reasons it's a little neater to make Jessica Hugo's sister so that is who she is she doesn't have an occupation she is a reluctant student because who likes to go to school when they're 11 and so she is Stella's pupil when she becomes a governess because Hugo is terrible at romance just like Edward Fairfax Rochester in Jane Eyre he brings on board Bianca Ingram so she is the analog for Blanche Ingram sounds really similar I just decided to change her first name because I vastly prefer the name Bianca it feels a bit more fresh and modern to me so Bianca is also 19 and she has her own private ship the Ingram but the Ingram is getting a little old and so her family is looking to have her marry Hugo in order to merge their two ships and save her family. Next is Iris Shaw and she is the first officer of the Rochester and her stand-in is Mrs. Fairfax, the housekeeper from Jane Eyre. She's 42 and she has lived on the Rochester since Hugo's mom married Hugo's dad. So she is a surrogate mother to him. Uh, she's kind of stern, but has like a warm gooey center. She's a motherly type. And she also fulfills that role for Stella. She is not only her boss, but she is like, she becomes like family to her. Next is Mari Hinata, who is the medical officer on board the Rochester. She is 28 and originally from the Nikkei, which is a Japanese ship, but she's from the Nikkei by way of the Marie Curie. She was kind of a like super STEM genius kid and was shipped off to the Marie Curie as a young teenager to become a scientist. And so she is the medical officer on board. Mari's a bit antisocial, which I totally relate to. She tends to stay in her quarters and, you know, do her lab experiments. And the only time she really leaves her room is for her weekly poker game with Hugo. And she kind of gets in Stella's way a bit, but you'll have to read to find out how. Mari doesn't really have an, uh, an analog from Jane Eyre. She's a lot like Grace Poole, but I also have a Grace Poole in the book, but the Grace Pool in Brightly Burning, and that's her name, I decided to keep her name, doesn't do what you think she's going to do, whereas Mari Hanada 
kind of fills that role in the sense that she is the creepy one who gives Stella a hard time. Then there's Orion Carmichael. He is 27 years old. He is originally from the Lady Liberty, which is the luxury American ship in my fleet, but now he is the communications officer on the Rochester. So he handles all of the techie stuff, and so he reports directly into First Officer Shao. Orion also doesn't have an analog from Jane Eyre. I came up with him because the Rochester needed a crew. Now, leaving the Rochester, I want to tell you about uh, who might be my favorite character, and that is John Carlson. So John is also an apprentice engineer on the Stalwart with Stella, and he is my Sinjin Rivers stand-in. If you've read Jane Eyre, you know, you know Sinjin's a piece of work, and John was my attempt to correct him a bit. That is not to totally sanitize him, he's still practical to a fault, not overly romantic, but he kind of fulfills that role, but he's also in many ways a friend to Stella. She keeps in touch with him when she's on the Rochester, and you know, he's got his ear to the ground for some uh, sinister things that are going on in the fleet. So that is John, and he is 18. And then there's George, George Davies. So he is 17 years old, and he is Stella's longest and oldest friend. They were both orphaned on the Empire, so they both come from the Empire, and were part of the orphan transport to the Stalwart. So they have been friends since they were 11 years old, and Stella starts off the book with a bit of a crush on him. He's hot and ginger, guys. Like, I have a type. So, but he's really oblivious <laughs> to Stella and her feelings, as boys tend to be. Now, he doesn't technically have a Jane Eyre analog. Probably the closest you're going to get to it is he's Helen if you squint, and isn't Helen because things that happen to Helen don't happen to George. But he's kind of that childhood friend, the person who was there for Stella when she really needed it, or Jane, Helen was there for Jane when she really needed it. He kind of fulfills that role. Next is Sergei Orlov. He is 38 years old and he is a transport ship captain. He's from the St. Petersburg originally, that is the Russian ship in the fleet, but his business is running transports. That can be transporting people, that can be transporting supplies, and he is the main like runner for the Rochester. So he has delivered many a governess and employee back, you know, to the Rochester. So he has some interesting information about why people tend to mysteriously leave the ship. He's kind of, you know, he brings a levity to things, he's he's funny, and he may or may not have a bit of a romantic thing going on with Shao. So I really love Sergei. He has no analog in Jane Eyre. I just was like, someone has to get her to the Rochester, and he kind of bloomed as a character as I was writing him. So he is one of my favorites. And last but certainly not least is one of my favorite characters, and that is Rory. So Rory stands for Rochester On Board Roving Intelligence, and she is the artificial intelligence who runs the Rochester. She is definitely a bit sentient, she's definitely a bit learning, and she is very sassy. She likes to make quips. So she basically runs the ship, everything is run by voice command and Rory. Rory is always in your ear, as long as you have your earpiece on. I didn't want to do any weird embedded tech, because that can go horribly wrong. And she, funnily enough, becomes one of Stella's friends, essentially. She's kind of this, this presence in the background. I really love playing with AI, so Rory is essentially her own character. There are tons of other like minor characters and including characters I'm not going to talk about because spoilers and if you've read Jane Eyre you know why. Uh, so there are other certainly other characters but those are like the main cast of characters that I think that you should know about before you read Brightly Burning. I hope you enjoyed that glimpse into who's who in Brightly Burning. I can't wait for you to meet all of these characters. I loved writing them. I feel like they're my friends. If you can't tell from the way that I talk about them. It was a lot of fun coming up with kind of who would be like the characters in Jane Eyre, how, how they would be the same, how they would be different, as well as new characters that I introduced to the world, you know, to kind of make it work for the sci-fi world that everything takes place in. 
Again, Brightly Burning comes out on May 1st from HMH Teen. It's Jane Eyre in space. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. I'm happy to make some more videos telling you a bit about Brightly Burning. You know, before the book comes out, it'll all be spoiler free. And after the book comes out, if you want to discuss some of these spoilers, I can certainly do that as well. So as always, everyone, happy reading.